At Exploring the Outdoors, we're always looking for new ways to make your outdoor experience more enjoyable and safer. One popular item, the survival bracelet, is a step in the right direction, but doesn't go quite far enough. We've improved upon the basic idea and developed a survival bracelet that takes emergency preparedness to the next level. With our survival bracelet and your pocket knife, you will have all that you need to meet the three C's of survival and more. Your Explore the Outdoors survival bracelet and a pocket knife meet the three C's of survival. Cutting, your pocket knife meets this need. Cordage, six to 10 feet of paracord and 30 feet of fishing line fulfill this need. And combustion, jute cord and the ferro rod fire starter will help you to fill this need as well. How to use your bracelet in an emergency situation. First of all, you want to find a clean, flat surface to unlace your bracelet so you don't lose any or misplace any of the smaller items. You want to locate the melted ends of the bracelet near one of the buckles. And then using a tool or a pocket knife, or if you don't have a tool, you can just use, uh, use your teeth to, to pull that melted end back through the lacing and start to unlace the... Uh, the survival bracelet. And you do this by just pulling the ends back through the loops and you want to just keep on doing this until you reach the opposite buckle. It'll take a little bit of time but that's okay because one of the things you want to do in a survival situation is stay put and this will make you give you a reason to stay in one place. Okay, once you've unlaced the uh, paracord to the opposite buckle on your, on your survival bracelet, then you need to come back to this black uh, electrician's tape here and find the, uh, the end of that, which can be a challenge sometimes, and then start to um, unwind that. And underneath that electrician's tape, you'll find the end of your fishing line. And at this point you want to just start to unwind that fishing line from the center of the bracelet. And just work your way again to the opposite end of the, of the bracelet, unwinding that fishing line as you go. As you do this, you'll notice in the center of the bracelet we have a, a straw-like container here, and that's where we keep the, uh, the fish hooks, the sinkers, and the fire starting rod. So when you get that uncovered, you want to make sure you put that in a safe place where you won't lose those small parts of your bracelet. And also as we unwind this, you'll notice that the, uh, the fire starting jute cord has also been wound underneath the fishing line. And once you get that little straw-like container exposed, you want to make sure you put that in a safe place. It is sealed with tape, so you can put it in your pocket or someplace like that if you'd like. Then once you get to the uh, to the end again, you'll notice that we have that fishing line looped over that last buck, buck, buckle, and that's to make sure that it doesn't come loose and you don't lose it. And just go ahead and pull that end through that loop, and there you have your your 30 feet of fishing line. What you want to do at this time is. Uh, find one of the ends of that fishing line and then find yourself a small stick and just start wrapping 
that fishing line around that stick so that you can keep it in a, in a safe area and it will be easily accessible to use, be used for whatever purpose you have in mind for that fishing line. So go ahead and, go ahead and just wrap that around the stick and keep it in a safe place until you're ready to use it. Okay, now we're going to open up the little container that you find in the center of your of your bracelet. And this uh, this container is uh, where you'll find your fish hooks and your sinkers. You may have to kind of push those out. It's a pretty tight fit on the sinkers, but you can slowly work those out to where you can use them. Again, for, uh, for bait for, for fishing, you can find all, all sorts of different kinds of baits. Um, if you look underneath logs, you can find grubs and, uh, and worms and use those for bait. Or if you want to, you can even cut a little piece off of this straw and that's kind of shiny and you can put that on the hook and use it for an artificial type bait. Okay, and then your fire rod is also in this container. Just unwind the, the tape and pull that off. You'll see your, your fiber rod. You pull that out, and that's what you use to, to start your fire. What you want to do to start your fire is cut off about a two inch length of the jute cord. And you don't need more than that. It works pretty good as a fire starter. And you want to just kind of unravel the fiber, and fluff it up. Obviously, before you start your fire with your jute cord, you're going to want to have your uh, your wood and your tinder and your kindling ready so that once you get the fire going on this jute cord, you can just move it into your fire bed and you've got a fire going. Okay, once you've got your, uh, your jute twine separated and rolled up into a little ball, find yourself a piece of, of bark off the, a dead tree or something and set your twine on that so that once you get it burning you can just slide it right into your fire bed. And this is some pretty good tinder here that I got off that piece of dead aspen bark. Just the inner bark on that. That's a, a good tinder to use to get a fire started. When you've got a new fire rod it may take a couple of strikes with your with your knife to get the sparks to come off of it. Just give it a couple strikes and it'll be ready to go. And I've also found that it's better rather than striking down with your knife that sometimes pushes your tinder out of the way and uh, creates a, a real mess in trying to get a fire started. I found it's easier to pull your flint back away from your your tinder and that way you don't push it out of the way when you strike it. So we go ahead and, and uh, put a couple of strikes here to get your, your jute twine going. Then you can slide it into your fire bed and before you know it you've got a fire going ready to keep yourself warm and cozy and I'll do all the other good things that a fire can do for you in a survival situation. Your survival bracelet is not a substitute for a complete survival kit but may be enough to keep you alive in a serious emergency. Visit our website to order your complete survival bracelet. For more tips on outdoor survival visit the blog page of our website. There will be new blogs weekly at www.outdoored.us.